see. Let's see. Well, let's start right here. All right, what am I looking at? Well, you're looking it, it at... It looks like Chinese. You're looking at uh, an installation consists of um, Yushu characters. And uh, these characters were invented by uneducated uh, peasant women in China about a thousand years ago. And they use this secret language. It's actually practiced in secret. And uh, they use this secret language to communicate with one another um, after they're married off um, to different parts but, of the county. So how close is it to traditional Chinese? How, how close is it to some of the other dialects that are in that Well, it's not area? really that close. Certain characters that are very um, close, for example, uh, this, this character means a female. Okay, so this is okay. very close to the traditional Chinese character. Yeah. And, and so is this means a person. So that's very close. Right. But uh, however, the rest of them are not uh, as close as to the Chinese written language. Um, but what's amazing uh, for me that I, I found um, was the, the fact that the language was invented by uneducated peasant women. Yeah. And, uh, and then the fact that they were able to continue this tradition for almost a thousand years, primarily in secret. Right, um, but did, did this correspond to a, a spoken language that was different, or? Uh... No, it's, it's primarily the written language. Mm. Written language. And uh, so, so that's what's really amazing, but in the feudal society of China at that time, the practice was able to carry on for about a thousand years. Because but women's lives are so separate from men's lives? or Not only that, because of the feudal society in the countryside, the marriages were arranged pre right. by the parents right. or uh, their grandmother and the mother would start teach the, the child this language. And uh, so, so it's been carried on for about a thousand years. And uh, it was only discovered back in 1950 uh, by accident that who, somebody, who were the people who first revealed this? Well, it was, it was somebody found this piece of uh, written material had these characters on on the paper, and then at first they thought it was some kind of. Uh, um, uh, espionage for, <laughs> oh. uh, you know, from Russia or from whatever. And then the discovery was uh, like a legitimate written language in the southwestern part of China that these women practiced. Right. So uh, the last woman that actually uh, using this method of, of uh, Nushu, uh, she died in 2003. So, so then. And how old was she when she died? Uh, she, uh, according to the uh, New York Times, uh, that they didn't know her age. Uh, they didn't have any ageless, record of her. They didn't have yeah, a record yeah. of, of her, her birth. So, um, but they figured that she was probably in her 90s. And uh, so after her, the younger one generation of book that contained uh, oh, these characters. Okay. So I was using these characters initially. I made uh, wooden blocks um, for, for this piece. And that's so, where you start to think of it in terms of the cubes, cubes and the, uh, exactly, right. the squares. And then using CD cases um, also is uh, an, uh, an idea that I came up with, the uh, comparison of an ancient language with contemporary um, way of communication. Because we right now we use computers and CDs, uh -huh. and uh, at that time they were using these um, characters and on paper to communicate. Um, so that's how this project came along. So how do you compose the picture? Do you do you, do you think of it starting from the right side and then working like across? This is primarily a, a basic uh, uh, po poem that they they cited. Uh, so, so th this is followed of whatever the, the poem that they had. But these little characters, I combined um, 
the characters and then composed some of the, the sayings in there. But primarily, uh, the, they're saying that they are uh, born in the feudal society of China and as, a, as an uneducated uh, women, we, uh, you know, they didn't have any options. Um, so, so what they need to do is to um, kind of uh, revise the, the social structure of the country in order for them to escape this type of uh, oh. life. So it was subversive notes. No, not to the extent of... Uh, of, of involving uh, Russia and the United States. Right, or, or political, <laughs> but it's primarily uh, you know, family-oriented due to the, the social structure. Right. That. You mentioned something about song. Right. So this is the, the, the poem and the song they sing. Can you and sing the song? No, I can't. Oh. <laughs> because because I, I was never really taught. Right, right I see. Yes. And, and it would be in the Yao language anyway. Exactly. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. So basically, I'm using this language uh, in, a, in a conceptual way to, uh, to express artistically. And also, this is a way for, uh, for me to deal with my own uh, situation because of my uh, cultural background and then being, uh, you know, like, uh, grew up in, in North America. So uh, I feel this type of work is a, a true reflection uh, of, of me. All right, so, so what, are, what are some of these characters? Okay, some of these characters are just saying that, <laughs> that uh, we are born in the feudal society of China, and we are basically contained and trapped in the society as a woman in order for us to uh, escape in the situation we need to perhaps somehow change the society situation so and that's your text or that that's that's a, that's a text that they basically see that, so this is an actual text that was right. recovered or found. Right. Okay, very interesting. But then you would go on from that to... Right, for, for the small writings then I would uh, compose some of the, uh, extract the letters uh, and then compose kind of my own version, so... Okay. And your choice of paper? The choice of paper is interesting because uh, I used a very coarse uh, textured uh, paper indicating that when they were um, perhaps learning uh, this language, they didn't, well, in the countryside uh, as peasant women, they didn't have the luxury of uh, expensive paper. Mm. So, and also this texture in the paper gives an uh, interesting background to, to the character. And also maybe we talk about a little bit the fact that uh, I'm using calligraphy and painting combined for right. the Right, how does that work exactly? I mean, right. is, this is more traditional pen or... Uh... Right, this is a more traditional uh, way of uh, writing calligraphy. And uh, in my situation, I sort of combine painting and writing at the same, uh, in one character instead of just uh, a straight uh, black lines. Right. And I know in some of your pieces you have red, red squares right. that you've put in. Put in, and that's, right. Uh, but, but, that's but in this one you wanted it monochromatic. Mo exactly. So, so, the, so I introduced uh, to the viewers the actual uh, language itself. And then for other pieces uh, I can exhibit this and together with other uh, images that I try to uh, abstract uh, the characters to the point that they, they become um, just uh, an image, but using the, the characters as a base. Right, but that's, that's part of the Chinese poetic tradition. Poetic tradition, uh, yes. As well. Exactly, exactly. So, um, and using ink, as, because that's also a Chinese tradition. Right. 